So this says P of T is the size of a population at time T, um, which of the following differential equations describes linear growth. So remember, these represent derivatives, dP, dt, that's the growth of the population over time. If you have linear growth, then you have a constant derivative. So the only one of these that is constant is A. So remember when I taught you derivatives, this was all the way back in unit two. So, you know, way back in, you know, like October, September, October. Um, every time you do a derivative, you go down a degree. So like if you have a cubic function, when you do a derivative, it's quadratic. And when you do the derivative of a quadratic, it's linear. And when you do the derivative of something linear, it's gonna be constant. So that's what's going on here. If we want linear growth, our derivative needs to be constant. So the only one that was constant was A, uh, no variable. Right, number two, which of the following is the solution to this differential equation with the initial condition y of pi equals one? All right, there's no y in this, which is kind of nice. We're just gonna multiply over the dx. And then we're going to integrate. I like to make this be a different color so that you can see the step that we're doing. And the nice thing when you just have dy, and you can put a one in there if you want to, that antiderivative is just y. So we get y equals, which is fantastic because the goal at the end is to make it be y equals. Um, so that's really nice. All right, so hey guys, I need um, a function that if I did the derivative, I would get sine. Forget about two for a second. But hey, everybody, and I'm trying to wake you up here, Monday morning, first day back. I need a function that if I did the derivative, I would get sine of x. You can type privately if you're feeling shy. I just want to wait till I get a couple answers here. And good, nice job, guys. Perfect. Because the derivative of cosine would be negative sine, but it's not negative. We need a negative there to, to cancel it out. Good, nice job, everybody. All right. So negative two cosine of x plus c. And then we're going to plug in the initial condition. So we're going to plug in pi for x and one for y. All right. So y is one. And let me pull up my unit circle. Pi is right here. This is your start finish line. If you rotate halfway around, you're at pi. We're doing cosine, which is the x value. So cosine of pi is negative one. So cosine of pi would be negative one times negative two would be two and then plus c. So again, the cosine of pi was negative one times negative two was c. All right, and so c, we solve for C, C is going to be negative one. And so I'm going to rewrite this step exactly as it is, except instead of plus C, I'm going to put minus one. And so that is your answer. Y equals uh, negative two cosine of X minus one. So that is E. All right, number three, which of the following is the solution to this differential equation with this initial condition, all right? This one, we're going to multiply over the y and then multiply over the dx, which you can basically just think of as cross multiplication. And I like differential equations because they're just so, you know, formulaic. Just do this, do this, here's your answer. All right, antiderivative. Um, this would be one half y squared. And then on this side, 2x squared plus c. And so we're gonna plug in two for X and negative two for Y. So if X is two, two squared is four, double that is eight. And if we plug in negative two for Y, negative two squared would be four, half of that is two. And so C is negative six. So we're gonna recopy this step exactly like it looks, but instead of a plus C, we'll put minus six and then we just have to get y by itself. We avoided that here because it was already y equals. We just had you know, integral of just dy. Um, but here we've got to get y by itself. So I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 2. Oh, wait. I don't need a negative in there. I was going to say, I didn't think that ended up being negative. I just randomly put a negative in there for no reason at all. I'm sorry. I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So this will be 4x squared minus 12. And then to get rid of the squared, you have to square root. Now, if you don't have an initial condition, like say this wasn't here, you would be solving for the general solution, which means an infinite number of answers. And you would put plus and minus. But when there is an initial condition, you only want one particular answer. So you have to choose, do you want the plus or do you want the minus? And you'll notice some of these choices are positive and some of them are negative. When it comes to your initial condition, your output value, your y value is negative. So we want the negative square root. 
So negative square root 4x squared minus 12. And then they give a domain for this because you can't square root a negative number. So x would have to stay above square root of 3. Um, you don't need to worry about that so much because you can pick your answer just based on this. All right, number four, we're going to divide over the y. So it'll be 1 over y dy and then multiply over the dx. So secant squared of x dx. All right, so hey, everybody, what is our antiderivative for one over y? So that's one of our kind of like special ones. And yeah, good, nice job, guys, perfect, ln, awesome. So ln of y equals, all right, now secant squared of x, I need a trig function, and I'll pull out my flashcards. If you do the derivative, you're going to get secant squared, like that's the answer. So who is secant's buddy? Let me pull out the flashcard, but I want to ask you guys, what goes with secant? Good, nice, well-remembered, guys. You didn't forget everything over break. Fantastic, good. Um, if you do the derivative of tangent, you're going to get secant squared. Right, so this is tangent of x plus c. And then here's our initial condition. y is 5 when x is 0. So we're going to plug in 5 for y. That's just going to be ln of 5. And x is 0. I should just keep my unit circle out here. Here's 0 pi. You've rotated nowhere. So this point right here. We're doing tangent, which is y over x. So that would be 0 over 1, which is just 0. So tangent of 0 is 0. That just gives us you know, nothing plus C. So I'm going to recopy this line. But instead of plus C, I'm going to put plus ln of 5. And then we have to get Y by itself. So to get rid of the ln, you do E. It's E to the power of. And the E and the ln are going to cancel. And remember, we take this and we write this out front just as one big coefficient. So it's going to be um, 5E to the power tangent of X. When you drop the absolute value, you would put plus and minus um, if you are doing the general solution. But here I want one particular solution and our y value is positive. So I want the positive version of this. All right, so 5e to the tangent of x, so that one is c. All right, here we've got dy dx equals 2y squared. Now, when you divide the y squared over, it would be y to the negative 2. You can write that as 1 over y squared. That would mean the same thing like this. Um, but when I divide that y squared over, I'm going to write it as y to the negative 2. And then we're going to multiply the dx over, so 2 dx. I usually get asked, hey, Ms. Cole, why don't you move the 2 over as well? That's kind of a personal preference. If you just have a coefficient, it doesn't really matter which side it's on. I tend to leave them over here, though, because remember, at the end, you want to get y equals, like y by itself. So the more stuff you move to the left, the more stuff you're just going to have to move back to the right at the end. So, um, so I would just leave it there. But if it's just a coefficient, it honestly doesn't matter where you put it. Kind of. All right, so we're going to add 1 to the power. That will make it less negative. So y to the negative 1. And then you have to divide by negative 1. So we're going to put a negative out front and then equals 2x plus c. Now let me rewrite that without the negative exponent. Um, y to the negative 1 would be 1 over y. All right, and then we have this initial condition. y is negative 1 when x is positive 1. All right, so if y is negative 1, these negatives are going to cancel x is positive 1, so that would make this 2 plus c. And so c is negative 1. So I'm going to recopy this line. I'm going to come over here because I'm running out of space. I'm going to recopy that line exactly, in, except instead of plus c, I'm going to put minus 1. We found that c was negative 1. And then we're going to get y by itself. So what's going to happen is we're going to multiply the y to this side and then divide the 2x minus 1 to this side. Again, these two things are just essentially going to switch places. We're multiplying the y over, and then we're dividing all of this over. So be negative 1 over 2x minus 1 equals y. The stuff I have in parentheses just basically switched the spots. 
Now, usually that's your answer, y equals whatever, and you just leave it as an equation. This time they actually asked us to plug something in. When x equals two, what is y? All right, so we're gonna plug in two for x now. Two times two is four, minus one is three. So y is negative a third, and so that is b. All right, number six, a curve has a slope of two x plus three. All right, slope means derivative. So dy dx is two x plus three. They made you set it up yourself for this one. So slope is two x plus three. So we're gonna multiply the dx over, this one doesn't have a y in it, which is really nice when that happens because when we go to do the antiderivative, this is just gonna be y equals, which is fantastic. This antiderivative would be x squared plus three x plus c. And let's see, our initial condition, um, x is one, y is two. All right, so we're gonna plug in two for y, x is one. So this would be one plus three plus c. So that's four plus c. So c is negative two. So I'm gonna recopy this line exactly like it looks, except instead of plus C, I'm gonna put minus two. And actually that's it, we're done. They didn't make us plug in anything else. So that's our answer. So Y equals X squared plus three X minus two. So that one is B. All right, number seven. This looks like a lot, but the silver lining here is there is no y in this. So all we have to do is multiply over the dx. So that's dy equals sine of x, cosine squared of x, dx. Now this one is gonna involve a u substitution. Again, I like doing this unit last because it involves some review there. We're gonna spiral in some review of u substitution. Now, the way I know I need a u substitution is this is more complicated than just being able to write the answer. I can't just write what this answer is. So we're gonna need to substitute. So u is either going to be sine or cosine. I'm going to let u equal cosine of x because that's what's being squared. Remember, you want this to be like the guts of the problem, like the inside stuff. Cosine of x is being taken to the second power. So I'm going to let u equal cosine of x. That derivative is negative sine. And I'm going to divide the negative over. And then I can highlight. Um, what's going to match in the problem is sine of x dx, and in its place, I'm going to put a negative, I'll put that out front, you can put negative one if you want, du goes at the end, and what's still there is whatever you didn't highlight, um, which is you know, cosine of x squared, we're replacing that with u, so it is u squared. And so the whole point of doing that substitution is you took this thing that looked really complicated and you made it look a lot simpler. This antiderivative would be one third u cubed plus c. And then we're gonna put cosine of x back in for u. So it is negative one third cosine cubed of x plus c. Um, again, usually that's the answer. This time they want us to plug in something else. Find y, ooh. Wait, we have an initial condition. Y is zero when X is pi over two. All right, so let's plug that in and figure out what C is. Y is zero when X is pi over two. All right, here's our unit circle. Let me ask you guys this time. Where is pi over two? Up, down, left, or right? Um, where is pi over two on our unit circle? You can just type up, down, left, or right, because I know it's kind of like a little compass here. Good, up, this is pi over two up here at the top. I feel like we've grown a lot with the unit circle over this year, just like keep on bringing it up. And I feel like we finally got there at the end. All right, here's pi over two. Uh, we're gonna do cosine of pi over two. Cosine's the X value. Um, so that is zero. So cosine of pi over two gives you zero. Zero cubed is zero times negative a third will be zero. Um, so C came out to be zero. So there is a C value, it's just that it's, it's nothing, all right? So I'm gonna recopy this line, except instead of plus C, I'm just gonna put nothing. You could put plus zero, I suppose, if you wanted to. Um, and then we can answer the question, what is the value of Y when X is zero? All right, unit circle here again. Here's zero right here. 
And again, we're doing cosine, which is the x value, which is one. So one cubed is one times negative a third is negative a third. So that one is b. All right, and then last one. Ooh, this is really small. Uh, a rumor spread among the population of n people. Let me write this a little bit bigger just so that we can see what's going on. All right, n is the population. Um, as Okay, proportional to just means that you know it, it could be scaled by something. All the choices have a k in them. That's what that proportional to means. Just means you, you, you're gonna have it scaled by something. You do this back in algebra two. I know you guys are like that was a million years ago, but do you guys remember like direct variation, inverse variation? You had y equals kx or y equals k over x. It did happen. It was just a while ago. I promise you. Anyway. Uh, uh, the product. All right. Hey, everybody, what does the word product mean that we're going to be doing? If you have a product of two things, what did you do? Um, if you do a product. Good. It means you're multiplying. All right. So we're going to multiply. Uh, the number of people who have heard the rumor and the number of people that have not heard the rumor. Okay. So you've either heard the rumor or you haven't. You can't kind of hear a rumor. You either heard it or you didn't. Okay. have heard the rumor. So P means that you have heard the rumor. Um, then which of the following needs to be, you know, what did you say? Which of, which of the following differential equations could you use to model this situation? All right, so what does it say? DP, DT, write this out officially, equals K times whatever, that's the proportional to. Uh, sorry, the audio keeps getting quiet because I keep leaning over towards the paper to like read it better because it's written so small. So when I lean forwards, it probably just gets a little quieter because I'm a little further away from the microphone. But I'm I'm sorry. I'll just try to talk louder. All right, portion two: the number of people who have heard the rumor, which is p, times the number of people who have not heard the rumor. All right, how could we figure out who has not heard the rumor? If this is how many people there are. And this is how many people have heard it. How can I figure out how many people have not heard it? And yeah, good, perfect. We're just gonna subtract. If you take the number of people that there are and subtract who's heard it, that's gonna give you the people that have not heard it. All right, and so we multiplied P times N minus P. It was a product. All right, so that one is, let me see. Uh, B for that one. 